This week in lab, we're going to begin a series of experiments that over the next few weeks will show us some ways that we can figure out how to balance a chemical equation experimentally, not just by looking at charges in the periodic table and making predictions. So our first experiment in that series is looking at the reaction of aluminum with hydrochloric acid. I've got all the equipment we're going to need set out here. First of all, probably the most important thing, working in the lab now, so better have safety goggles on at all times. I've got a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a piece of Tigon tubing attached to a rubber stopper, the beaker is here just so that we've got something to move water around with. A large graduated cylinder. We're going to be generating hydrogen gas and we're going to be measuring how much hydrogen gas we generate by water displacement. So this is going to allow us to measure how much gas we've produced. Trough full of water. Again, we're measuring gas production by water displacement. And my reagents. We're going to be using aluminum. And it turns out that the aluminum foil that you can buy in the grocery store is actually a pretty good, pretty pure source of aluminum. So that's actually what we can use for this experiment. And hydrochloric acid. So the first thing that we've got to do in order to collect our data is fill up that graduated cylinder with water so that we can displace it when we form gas. Now, in water, gases rise, so I can't just fill this cylinder up and stick a tube in it because all the gas will escape. So in order to fill this for water displacement, I need to fill up the cylinder and get it upside down in that trough of water. So I can use this beaker. I said it was just here to move water around. As you're filling, one of the nice properties of water that we're going to utilize is a pretty good surface tension. So let me fill that up and I'm going to stop there for a moment to let some of those bubbles come to the top. And now let me fill this up and I'm going to fill it so that it's actually over full. You can just see that the water is actually heaped up over the top of the graduated cylinder a little bit. So now, if I take my hand and I carefully seal the top, and you should be able to pick it up, tip it, and once it's under the surface of the water in the trough, should be fine. I'll go ahead and put this in the clamp just to keep it from tipping over. Now what do we do? Well, now we're just about ready to start the experiment, so let's get our gas delivery tube and so I can slide the gas collection tube up until it's well up into the tube. You can just see it there. And now I'm ready for my data collection. I've got my pre-weighed little ball of aluminum foil inside a 250 milliliter beaker. Before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure that this stopper fits in the mouth of this beaker because some of them are a little tight. This one looks like it fits really well. So I think I'm ready to go. Now it's just a matter of measuring out the acid I'm going to use. Now with many of the experiments that we do, having an exact amount isn't nearly as important as knowing the amount that we've got. So I'm going to try to pour out exactly 5 milliliters, but if I don't, that's okay. I'll just record how much I actually used in my lab notebook. And it looks like I went over a little bit. But again, that's fine. As long as you record the amount that you used, you can still use the data most of the time. So let me look at that. 
it looks like I've delivered about 5.30 milliliters. So I'll write that down so I know. Now we're ready to go. I need to dump this acid in this flask and cap it as soon as possible. So ready, set, dump, stopper, Nothing's happening. Why isn't there anything happening? Well, one of the interesting things about aluminum is aluminum is actually quite reactive. So if I have a fresh, clean aluminum surface and I expose it just to the oxygen in room temp or in the room air, it reacts and it forms an aluminum oxide coating. So there's a very thin, very hard aluminum oxide coating on this aluminum foil. Now the acid we're using will dissolve that coating, but it takes a little bit of time. So be patient, and I can see that I'm starting to get some color showing up here, so that must mean that I'm getting some to dissolve. So I'm starting to see some cloudiness in the liquid that's inside my flask and we just started generating gas. I made it through the oxide coating. One thing you'll also notice is this flask is starting to get kind of warm. This reaction generates heat as well as gas. But to measure the volume of a gas I need it at a relatively constant temperature. So I'm going to use the temperature of the water in my trough as a temperature bath. So let me dunk this in the trough to cool it down while the reaction continues. It's very important at this point that the tip of your gas collection tube is above the level of liquid in here because as this gas cools down it'll contract and if that gas tube is underwater it's going to suck water in. Right now it's just sucking extra gas in as the temperature equalizes. I need to leave this in here long enough so that the gas in this entire system gets to a constant temperature and that's the temperature of my bath. So it's going to take just a few minutes before the level of liquid in here stops moving. Alright, it looks like it stopped moving so now I'm down to temperature. I can feel the flask and yeah, the flask feels like it's the same temperature as the water. Let me just allow that to float over there. and. Now I can take a reading of the amount of gas I've generated in this experiment. Few things to keep in mind. First of all, remember that this cylinder is upside down. So zero is up here. Read upside down on the, on the scale. And I would say that I've collected about 400 three milliliters of gas. So that's the first run of the experiment. As with all good experiments, we don't want to just do this once. We want to take some repeat measurements to give us an idea of what kind of error we're dealing with and make us a little bit more confident that the measurements, that the results we're getting are correct. So I'm going to keep on doing a few more measurements. That's the basic experiment for this week. Just a few quick safety notes. First of all, watch the water. As I said, this is a little bit of a sloppy experiment. There's going to be water here and there. Try not to spill it too much on the floor so that you don't have slippery floors to contend with. Also, the acids we're going to be using, we're going to use a variety of different acids. And hydrochloric acid is a pretty safe acid overall, but stronger concentrations of hydrochloric acid can cause some damage. So be careful with that, be aware of that. It's not horrible, but make sure you respect it. Make sure you do the quiz, and I'll see you in lab this week.